Hello, everyone, and welcome to the week ahead with Michelle. I am loving this time of the moon cycle because as we are in the sign of Aquarius, the moon is getting ready to apply to Saturn. We can know that this is a closing of a lunation cycle, right? We're in the we're in the dark time of the moon. And there's so much that we've learned and experienced over this Aquarius lunar cycle. This is a really beautiful time, especially today, um, to integrate the lessons that have been arising in our life. You know, when challenges arise, when we're triggered, when we're um, going through periods of soul growth, Integration is one of the most important times and spaces that we can allow ourselves to settle in to the learning, to the thoughts, to the new ideas or to the changes that may be desiring to emerge, the new beginnings which are coming but require a certain amount of settling, stilling, distilling, um, and maybe even articulating Here's what I've learned. And in this case, with this new moon that we have on Monday, this new moon in Pisces, Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac from a natural zodiac perspective. The Aries new moon, which we will have in March, in, initiates us into a new cardinal cycle, into a new season and a new beginning relative to our lives. And while new moons represent new beginnings, this new moon in particular, I think represents a deep acknowledgement of the endings, of what is completing, of what is finishing. And if we look at the astrology, we have Pluto at 29 degrees Capricorn. Now this is gonna be a, a cycle that Pluto stays in these later degrees pretty much all of this year with the exception of it making a fresh start into Aquarius next month, right? Saturn is at 28 degrees Aquarius. Saturn's coming to the end of a cycle. For those who have strong Aquarius, Leo, Taurus, Scorpio placements, you've been getting worked in that realm and that work, those lessons, those changes are coming to an end. And then we have Venus, who is at 29 degrees of Pisces today, coming to the end of her Venusian cycle, uh, being exalted in a place where she can dream and create and muse and, and sing and feel and heal, right? There's so much healing that can happen for us and then a new cycle begins when when we've completed a healing process if we've gone through heartbreak loss if we've been struggling and facing challenges or content inside of our soul as we come to the end of that process which you know anyone who's been through a dark night of the soul it's like you can never know when that's going to end but at some point it does end and at some point, something new begins to emerge. And we are at the end of the end in many respects, right? The end of the end bears its um, desire for completion. And the more complete that completion is, right? If we're ending a relationship and there's a deep sense of peace and forgiveness, and we've really allowed our heartache to be felt and to be processed, then the beginning of a new relationship is more free to have its own relationship. It carries less, we're not taking the baggage of the past into the new, right? If we're leaving an old home, if we're packing up and getting ready to move, the more we clear out the stuff that is no longer reflecting who we are or even where we're going, the less we take with us, the easier it is to move. And similarly, in the soul work that we're doing, the more we really stop to integrate the lessons that we're learning, the, the parts of our life and our self and our identity that are being shedded and transmuted, 
the easier it is to step into the unknown, ready to experience ourselves with fresh eyes. So this Pisces new moon, I'm dedicating to the grief, the healing of grief and the acknowledgement of love, the presence of love, the invitation of love, because the presence of grief is the acknowledgement of the heart and the healing of the heart is what we're called to do, especially this year as we progress, we can, we'll begin to see that there is no way to live a new life. There is no way to um, shed old evolutionary conditions unless we are centered in the heart and unless we are devoted to love as the bottom line of what we're doing. All other things, all other distractions, um, our habits, our old patterns will come to haunt us. And if we don't want to live that way anymore, if we really seek to change, the change comes through the heart. And the change is grounded then and embodied in this particular time with the courage to initiate that which is new, right? Venus steps in to Aries on Monday and then will be moving her way through to join with Vesta, to join with Jupiter, to join with Diana and Chiron and Juno as she makes her way towards Taurus, towards the head of the North Node. And in this new beginning that Venus is initiating, she's offering us the, the ability to, to bring fresh energy and courage and new thought to that which has been healed, that which has been um, learned, right? And that which we learned, we can then teach and share and experience something new with others because it's been fully integrated. Then the moon moves into Aries and joins the whole strong Aries stellium. If you are a person with a lot of Aries planets or Aries, that um, that energy of activation, you know, the energy of beginning anew is really pulling all of us in, in particular in, in that way. When the chart starts to become dominant on one side, these are, there are different chart patterns in astrology. And as planets start to congregate in one side, you can see that energy is pulling, right? It's pulling the evolution in a particular way. And it's very much pulling towards these new beginnings, right? We desire so much at this point, probably to shed the past and be, be able to move on with our lives, be able to start something new, be able to feel. But it's like when we want that, we're often trying to get that through a feeling of certainty. And the new never comes with certainty. The new only comes with something that has been unexperienced. And that's that can be that push-pull between what's familiar and comfortable and has allowed us a sense of emotional ground or stability, even if that stability is stagnancy, right? Even if that stability is repeating the same patterns and reinforcing, you know, feelings of fear or re repeating the same triggers, right, can often come in a way where it's become familiar. And the new is the unknown. It's what's unfamiliar, which can be a really beautiful thing if what's unfamiliar to us is emotional health, physical health, well-being, um, feelings of divine connection and love and unity in relationship. If what we're familiar with is severing or hurt or cutting um, of relationships or conflict, or if what we're familiar with is ill health or struggling with our well-being or feeling not at home, um, not belonging, not, you know, if, if ill, if that new, if the new is the inverse, the shift in direction from what we, from the past and what has been to what we are desiring to create, to grow, to cultivate in our life, then we can actually feel 
good about what's happening. We can feel good even if we're still facing challenges because, you know, when the peak of darkness comes, that means that the dawn is emerging, right? Light has to follow darkness, right? These are the solar and lunar cycles repeating themselves, guaranteed, right? Sun and moon come together once a lunation cycle, they begin a new moon, a new cycle begins, guaranteed moon will come back again to close that cycle, right? We can trust her movements. Th that kind of certainty can be the rhythm that develops our life in the face of such uncertainty. And so as the moon grows through Taurus into the first quarter square, right? She's moving in greater light. This is a time to very much, especially as she's applying to the North Node here, this beautiful sextile between the sun in Pisces and the moon in Taurus. This is an opportunity to grow our courage and to grow our commitment and devotion to what's new. Even if what's new is very small and almost imperceptible, even if what's old and what's dying or what's closing or what we've lost, even if the grief of that is still very present with us, we can carry ourselves wholeheartedly into what is emerging, into growing what is here, what is now, even if it's unknown to us what that will look like down the road, right? So much change is guaranteed to happen in this year, especially when we talk about these larger astrological themes like Pluto shifting in a, into Aquarius, Saturn shifting into Pisces. You know, Jupiter will make a shift mid-year into Taurus. Very quickly is moving through this airy sector of our chart and working with so much opportunity of what's new. And when so much opportunity comes quickly, what's the difficulty with quickness? It's challenging to sustain. It, it requires the discipline and the vigilance and the, and the desire to stay with something long-term. Mars is quick energy right? There's with so many planets in Aries, this is quick starts, sparking, sparking, sparking. But in order to sustain a spark into a flame, we have to give air to it. We have to cultivate the ground around it. We have to give and prepare that spark to, to settle into warmth. Right. If it becomes too quick and too fast and out of control, it can burn something down. Right. If it is contained, right, it might not illuminate enough for us. It might not give enough light to what we need. Right. But if we stay with that illumination and we stay with that spark and we attune to it over a long period of time, taking care of it on a daily basis, nurturing that which is within us that is healing and growing, nurturing the part of our soul that is evolving. Eventually that translates into lifestyle change. It translates into environmental change. It translates into a change of our way of thinking about our lives, about our relationships, about who we are, that allows for the that which we're becoming to really emerge. And so we're in this process this week of beginning this new cycle, which is really a beginning of the end of a cycle, which is really the beginning of an end of a way of thinking about our lives and a way of, you know, orienting to our pain and our struggles and our challenges that is ultimately bringing us greater courage to face a life that we desire, to face the life that we desire that wants for us to tend the flame. So with that, I thank you so much for being with me this week. As always, please like this video, share with me in the comments anything that touched your heart, anything that you want to speak to that inspired you. And if you'd like to join me for the new moon ceremony on Monday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 
um, it is included as a part of my community at any level of membership. So from evolution student membership to soul apprenticeship, if you're in my class series, everyone gets the opportunity to come together. We pray together. We do a practice. I tune into the energies of that particular new moon and um, you have an opportunity to share the recording of the transmission for the new moon and the prayer and meditation is included for everyone. So even if you can't make it live, you'll get that recording. There's a link in the bio in the description below so you can sign up and join me. I would love to see you there. Love to pray together. Many blessings to you on your healing journey. And thanks so much for being with me. Bye for now.